What is going on, I've Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna talk about 16-8 versus one meal a day. Hopefully, this video works as a way for you to decide which one you want to do, as I'm going to touch on the benefits of both and the negatives of both, and basically put them up against one another so that you can make an informed decision if you want to switch the method that you're using or if you want to start intermittent fasting for the first time. Stay tuned. Okay, two of the most popular intermittent fasting protocols that you will come by is the 16-8 method and OMAD, or one meal a day. Within the intermittent fasting community, you'll see a lot of people consistently debate which one of the two are better. But both of them have their pros and cons. Both of them have things that are beneficial for you as the user of the protocol and things that are not beneficial for you as the user of the protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight some of the benefits that they have first before I dive into separating the two and comparing and contrasting them. Let's first start with the 16-8 method. The 16-8 method is the most accessible effective method of intermittent fasting. I personally believe that if you reduce your timing of fasting less than 16 hours, you're barely tapping into that body fat per day if you're doing 15 or 14 hours of fasting. Yes, you are technically fasting, but you're not tapping into your body fat as much as you think you are. You are, however, still reducing calories or having your meals in a compressed window, thus giving you more of an idea of what you're actually eating so that you can maintain calorie maintenance or calorie deficits simply by eyeballing it or just simply by the understanding of how much you're eating within a 12 hour window or, or you know a nine hour window or a 10 hour window. But with intermittent fasting, there are perks and those perks come with reducing your insulin down to baseline so that you can tap into body fat effectively, but that takes time to even get to that point. So if you have a very short intermittent fasting protocol, very short, like 12 hours or 13, 14 hours, you're not giving yourself enough time to even get to the point where you start burning the body fat. Now, this is not to say that you're not going to lose weight because as I mentioned, you can still actually burn some fat if you're at a caloric deficit, but you won't be doing it as effectively as you can if you were to just extend your fast a little bit longer. So my cutoff in terms of the reduction of your fasting window would be 16 hours being the lowest amount of time for fasting. Now, with 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of eating is the most effective, accessible intermittent fasting protocol because this protocol actually is very easy for those who have not fasted and for those who fear fasting in general. For those who just have never done it or can't wrap their minds around it, once you start thinking about how you can get into fasting, you start noticing that the most accessible one for you or the most friendly one that, that looks very inviting or, or easiest to step into is the 16-8 method. And once you start thinking in your head that you you sleep for eight hours, you wake up, you sometimes skip breakfast because you're late for work or, or you have to rush out, you don't have time to eat anything, you, you get caught up at work, you haven't eaten yet. And then you start realizing you kind of get close to the 16 hours of fasting anyways. So all you have to do is set up a protocol where you're doing this every day by simply timing it. And that simply just makes it less scary than all the other intermittent fasting protocols. It's also the gateway into intermittent fasting so that when you realize that it's not even that hard to fast it may give you the the springboard to get into a different protocol you know maybe the uh, 18 hours of fasting or maybe the 20 hours of fasting the warrior diet or even the OMAD diet which we're comparing and contrasting in this video which is 23 hours of fasting with one hour eating or just simply eating one time throughout the entire 24 hour period now you do have to factor in lifestyle lifestyle is important because that is something that we deal with everything is not simple simply biological. Everything is not simply about how your body's reacting to a specific diet or a specific protocol. Your lifestyle also matters, which is why eating six meals a day, for example, can actually be negative to your lifestyle because that's something that's very difficult to do. And it's very cumbersome when you're trying to just live a normal life. Now, 16-8 makes your lifestyle still very, very simple, still very, very easy. It doesn't inflict too much change in your lifestyle. It doesn't disrupt too much. So you'll be 
be able to basically socialize with others in a natural way because your eating window more than likely can allow you to eat during that time frame depending on where you situate your windows you can also strategically situate your windows based on how you socialize and when you go out knowing when and how you go out with your friends and with your co-workers or whatever it is you can understand more or less your frame your time frame for when you will most likely eat and you can situate that with the 16-8 method and because the 16-8 method allows you so much time you have a lot of freedom and versatility you could also be versatile within the strategy of how you eat when you do the 16-8 method since you have such a large window you can decide in on one day you'll eat early in the window and then you'll eat late in the window or you'll eat early in the middle and then at the end or you'll just eat at the end and then transition it and make it even even smaller window on tuesday by eating it within your last four hours because you just didn't feel hungry or you didn't want to eat and then the next day you can eat in the beginning of your eight hours you would have fasted for a longer time the day before but you fasted for a shorter time the next day but it's all still within your window you have the versatility of moving back and forth because the window is so large these are the positives that come with the 16-8 method in my opinion, the 16-8 method in terms of lifestyle disruption for someone who is coming in for the first time is probably the best protocol with the most effective outcome for the end goal of losing weight and burning body fat. But now let's move on to OMAD. What are the benefits that OMAD carry? The benefits of OMAD is that it is extremely effective at burning body fat because it is giving you such a large window of having your insulin at baseline and then continuing to burn fat after that since you're not eating until the 24th hour. So it's very, very effective at tapping into your body fat and predominantly burning body fat for the calorie energy expenditure that you utilize for the day in terms of being fat adapted in terms of training your body to become fat adapted so that you have the ability to go in and out of fasts very easily OMAD is one of those that can literally help train you quicker into getting into that fat adaptation stage which can take months and even years depending on your body makeup and how long you do it and how consistent you do it but because you're fasting for so long consistently every day it definitely helps you get into that fat adapted stage much faster. Also, the additional health benefits that come with intermittent fasting get pushed much more further when you do the OMAD, for example. Things like autophagy, they kick in and are much, much greater when you are fasting for longer. So the longer you fast, the better it is for autophagy. The 16-8 method would not be as potent when it comes to the autophagy factor. Also inflammation, things like that, which are kind of in line with that entire autophagy system is going to be better when the longer you fast and OMAD can help tap into that that much more effectively than the 16-8 method. Also, the increase in your HGH, that increase is happening gradually over time as you're fasting throughout the day. So if you do 16 hours, you'll get it to a certain point. But if you do 23 hours, you'll get it to an even higher point. And that definitely assists you in retaining muscle. Also, insulin sensitivity. A state of insulin sensitivity is different than just having your insulin be at baseline. Being in a state of insulin sensitivity is when you're body is much more effective at moving glucose throughout your body so that then it gets into that insulin baseline much faster simply because you build up your insulin sensitivity. Insulin sensitivity can be built up by going to the gym, by building muscles, by improving your cardiovascular system. All of these different things can increase insulin sensitivity, but also fasting for longer periods of time can also increase insulin sensitivity as you give your body that break from the constant ingestion of glucose. So those are the pros of each of them but there are cons to both as well starting with OMAD stepping away from the biological aspects of it OMAD is not the best when it comes to the social aspect of it if you have never fasted before going into an intermittent fasting protocol as strong as the OMAD protocol might not be very wise for you this is because you may get in there and get out very very quickly because it's so drastic in terms of the lifestyle shift in terms of the disruption from what you you've been used to. I would definitely recommend for those who've never fasted before to start with the 16-8 method as this can give you that 
that ability to test the waters to see how you feel when you do intermittent fasting. And if you feel good, and if it feels very easy and it blows your mind how easy it is as compared to what you thought it would be, then you can start to gradually move into other protocols. And if you if your goal is to get to OMAD, then you can start to chop down the hours until you get to the OMAD protocol. But it's not good for beginners. And also because the window is so small and it's literally just one meal a day, it limits you to what you can do with your friends in terms of eating. And let's be honest, eating or going out to eat and having food or having calories go into your your body is usually a big part of socializing with your friends. So if you're a person that constantly goes out with your friends and is always socializing throughout the week, it's probably best if you stay with the 16-8 method, as the OMAD method might be too disruptive for you and not allow you to live that type of lifestyle that you want to live. But if you just socialize on the weekends, you could do OMAD from Monday through Friday and on the weekends, omit yourself from doing those things and then go back to it on Monday. Or you can just do OMAD and then do the 16-8 method for Saturday and Sunday, and then back to OMAD from Monday through Friday. Whatever works best for you, but just know that OMAD in and of itself can be very disruptive if you have not set yourself up for a fasting lifestyle. Now the cons of 16-8, as you know, being in a fasted state for a longer time, that's going to be a negative point for the 16-8 because yes, it is effective, but it isn't as effective as OMAD. OMAD will be more effective than the 16-8 method. In terms of consistently burning fat, that's not to say that you wouldn't be consistently burning fat, you just wouldn't be doing it as effectively as you would be doing it if you were doing the OMAD diet. So there it is guys, you can do either the OMAD method or the 16-8 method, but it's all based on what is more preferable to you. Both of them will give you effective intermittent fasting benefits, but one can be better for you socially, the other can be better for you biologically. Both are great, both are amazing, but you have to look at what you're willing to do to reach your goal and what you're willing to sacrifice to reach your goal. And you could always interject and you could always mix and match. You could do 16-8 on the weekends and OMAD Monday through Friday and then you can just stop doing OMAD if you want to bulk, do some 16-8 and then when you go back and cut, just do OMAD. It's all up to you. All these different intermittent fasting protocols are there for you to use to benefit your specific goals. Hope this video was informative and I want to thank my patrons from my Patreon and I'm going to put their names right up here. And as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!